All right, guys, today we're going to be going over levels of prevention. So this might have been something that you guys have heard about previously. This is just being able to decrease the risk of any sort of pathologies happening with the patient, or if there are active pathologies, what are different classifications of how we treat them. So it all makes sense once I get into it. Um, this is level different than the stages of intention. Somebody got this mixed up like primary intention, secondary intention, that's wound healing. This is about just a general overview of pathology. So don't get these too confused. Someone did ask me before, but without further ado, let's get into it. So the types of prevention that we have, we have primary, we have secondary, and we have tertiary. If you get anything from this presentation, this slide right here is like the oversimplified overview of what's going on. Primary prevention is going to be our preventative measures, our prophylactics, like basically anything that's preventing the problem from happening in the first place. This is like when you look at all of your assignments at the beginning of the semester and you're like, I'm going to be proactive about all this and plan it all out to make sure I don't panic. That's what the primary prevention is. Secondary prevention is diagnostic components, tests and whatnot, and early detection. So this would be like if you did, were able to uh, do a mammogram and identify the breast cancer very early and then get right into treatment and everything will be fine. So that's what secondary prevention is. These are just routine tests that are going to prevent it, but they're going to make sure that they can identify it early so that we can begin treatment. Tertiary prevention is the actual treatment. So this is retroactive care. So we already have the pathology. It's already happening. This is treatment for the pathology. So if we're on the cancer thing, this would be like chemotherapy. So let's kind of break it down a little bit more. Primary prevention are gonna be, is going to be interventions that will happen before the pathology even appears. So if there's already an active pathology happening, the intervention cannot be primary prevention. So like if they already have cancer, we can't do anything to prevent that from happening. Prevent These are preventative measures that keep it from even happening. So for example, we're talking about a primary prevention for lung cancer. We're saying just don't smoke. Pretty much self-explanatory with that. So these can include also like immunizations for conditions that haven't been contracted yet. So like every fall, they're like, get your flu shot. So you get your flu shot at the beginning of flu season. So then you hopefully don't get the flu later. Or if you do get the flu, it's not going to be as bad as if you were not vaccinated for the flu. So that's how immunizations would fall under primary prevention. You don't actually have it yet. This is something that's preventative to make it to keep it from happening. Um, educating risk patients on the risk of maintaining a sedentary lifestyle, educating them to promote an active lifestyle, which would decrease the risk of pathology. So they don't have these pathologies yet, but these would decrease the risk of this happening. So like hypertension, obesity, and diabetes. You know, those patients that are like at risk for diabetes that we're like educating, like, hey, like let's try to, you know, be a little bit more healthier with our lifestyle. So then we're able, or like if we have any sort of eating disorder problems to help, you know, offer them treatment options to help with that. So then they don't lead to a pathology such as diabetes or obesity or something along those lines. These other examples of primary prevention can also include laws that limit exposure to hazards. So like, for example, you can't smoke around playgrounds or in schools or places where there's commonly a lot of children going in and out or like inside buildings and stuff. This is to prevent the secondhand smoke, which would put risk of cancer. And, you know, like every pulmonary pathology, the reason why they get it is like, like smoking. So those are examples of primary prevention. Nobody in these situations has the pathology that we're trying to prevent yet. So primary is before anything even happens. So for example, I'm using my an example of a house. So like primary prevention is like purchasing flood insurance. Let's say you live in like, I don't know, Tampa, Florida. That's where my family lives. There's hurricanes there protects you from costly repairs before a flood even happens. So that's kind of like purchasing any sort of insurance, getting a prenup, all of that stuff. You can think of those things as primary prevention for like other things. But when it comes to the body, educating, immunizations, laws that prevent things from happening, lots of education and stuff like that, that's all going to be primary prevention of these pathologies or just telling them don't smoke. Secondary prevention is going to be the role is to help diagnose pathologies before they become catastrophic. So secondary prevention is not going to stop the condition from happening. The condition's already existing. So like primary is the only one that could prevent the condition from happening. But like, you know, like we can't like prove like certain things cause cancer because then we'd have to do research on that to make say that. But 
in theory, primary prevention will prevent the pathology from happening. Secondary prevention is like, okay, so something happened. Let's try to keep it from being the worst case scenario, aka like death or something. Um, so pathology is present. Now what do we do? These can be examples include like mammogram screening, so early recognition for breast cancer, colonoscopies, early recognition for colon cancer. The age of onset of colon cancer is decreasing, guys. Like people in their 30s are getting diagnosed with colon cancer. If you have any prior risks, just make sure you're keeping an eye out for signs and symptoms like bleeding or irregularities in bowel and blood of, of your bowels. Just my PSA. Anyways, colonoscopies are an example of a secondary prevention self-exams for breast cancer or testicular cancer. So these are like, what I tell you like once a month, like first of the month, make sure you do your self-exam, make sure there's no lumps or anything funky. So they can have that early detection before it like metastasizes into something. So most people listening to this are in their mid twenties. Make sure y'all are doing that, especially if you're men. I feel like this is turning into my like, hey guys, let's make sure we don't die here. But like, these are things that you need to make sure you're thinking about anyways for yourself. But then also think about, I guess next time you do is your self exam like this is a form of secondary prevention this is an active recall i'm being really cringy right now guys but trust me you're never going to forget this now uh some blood tests so like when you go and the doctor just orders regular blood tests to see like are you having high fasting blood glucose levels like you know when you do the one where you fast so and you have to go do it first thing in the morning you're like i'm hungry can i just get my bagel i'm like annoyed those are types of secondary preventions testing blood cholesterol to make sure you're not developing pathologies like diabetes or um, like hyperlipidemia, which could lead to atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis, coronary artery disease, peripheral arterial disease. You know, you see the snowball happening. This is to prevent the snowball from getting any bigger. That's how you should think of secondary prevention. So for example, if we're going back to our house thing, secondary prevention is like having the home inspector come in after there's a flood. You have your flood insurance, let's just say. Still didn't the flood still happen, but you come in after the flood and you kind of say, okay, this can be fixed. This can be fixed. Um, blah, 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 but it's not preventing this from happening. So the secondary prevention is like, it's already happened. Now, what do we do moving forward? We've identified it early enough to make sure nothing bad happens. Tertiary prevention. So unfortunately, we live in the United States where tertiary prevention is pretty much the standard of care when it comes to what health insurance policies will pay for. So it's like, oh, we got all this fancy technology. We're only going to use it when somebody already has a pathology and it's causing problems. So the tertiary prevention is going to be the most common thing that you're going to be seeing because this is also where we fall most of the time with our interventions for physical therapy. So these are interventions that will treat the pathology. They're not going to prevent it from happening and they're not going to identify the pathology. These are things that are going to treat the pathology. These only prevent the pathology from getting worse or they improve the person's quality of life. So like we already got the pathology. This is treating it. This is keeping it from getting any worse. So examples of this would be, you know, cardiac rehab where physical therapy comes in after an MI to be able to treat the patient who's had a heart attack, helping them get better, helping them improve their quality of life to get back to doing the things they want to do. Can also be chemotherapy or radiation for any sort of cancer patients to help prevent the cancer from, you know, spreading or growing in size. That's the thought process behind these. Um, and that's also falling under the realm of tertiary prevention. Uh, physical therapy following a lateral ankle sprain. So like, you know, working on stability and stuff like that, working on, you know, I guess if this is our impaired body structures as well, if we go back to that ICF model, I know I'm like triggering some people are like, I forgot that was a thing. Just briefly look over it guys. Um, hospice care for terminally ill patients. Patients go on hospice, they're, they're, they're terminally ill, but this will increase the quality of life. So, you know, giving them morphine stuff, support systems, you know, therapy, for, you know, physical therapy or even mental therapy to help them out. But that would be, you know, one under the line of improving quality of life. So they not just, it's not just about fixing the problem with tertiary prevention. It's also like, you know, if someone's had a spinal cord injury, we teach them activities and, you know, things that they can do and modifications to be able to improve their quality of life. That's all under tertiary prevention. It keeps them from getting worse. So this is like, you're paying the renovation company to come in and fix your house following the flood. They can't prevent the house from being destroyed, but they can fix the house or improve the house. This is my example that I was using. So 
kind of makes a little bit more sense. So primary being our education, activity and modification, avoid the disease in the first place. That's our primary prevention. Secondary prevention is our screenings, diagnostic tests, self-exams to identify the problem early. So then we can move on to the tertiary prevention, which is the disease is present. These are the interventions that we're going to use to treat the disease and help make it like less causing problems to the whole body or improving the patient's quality of life. So let's get into our sample question, everybody. A physical therapist assistant is educating a patient on their risk of developing cardiovascular disease. The patient states that they just went in for a serum cholesterol test, and the patient states that their cholesterol is 200 milligrams per deciliter. This blood test is an example of what type of prevention? One, primary prevention. Two, secondary prevention. Three, tertiary prevention. Or four, quaternary prevention. So I'll give you guys a second to think about it. All right, guys, so the answer is secondary prevention. So we see that we were first educating this patient on the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. That education component would be considered a primary prevention because we're educating patients on risks, benefits, all of that stuff of developing a various pathology. They don't have the pathology yet if there's any problem. Patient states they went in for a serum cholesterol test and the patient states their cholesterol was 200 milligrams per deciliter. This blood test is an example of what type of prevention. So see this last part of the question here where it says this blood test is an example of which type of prevention. That is the stem of this question. This whole thing is related to what it's going to ask. But if we look at this, this blood test is an example of which type of prevention. If we just deleted everything else and we said a blood type test is what type of prevention, generally that's a diagnostic test it would be secondary prevention. But we have this whole thing in here to just make sure that we're identifying things correctly. The boards might try to trip you up asking you random questions or like putting a bunch of fluff in there. You have to make sure you're able to identify what the question's actually asking in this scenario. So make sure you read the whole thing. So it could be patients educating, oh, okay, that's primary. And then you move on. Did you, you gotta read the whole question because it's asking about the blood test. So this page, like blood test, diagnostic test, that's secondary, pretty much straight from what I just said here, diagnostic test. Um, and so cholesterol of 200 milligrams per deciliter for serum cholesterol, you want your cholesterol to be like under 200. So like, this is literally just the value that's the benchmark and everything, but you want people's serum cholesterol to be under 200. So they're decreasing their risk of developing cardiovascular disease and whatnot. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful in talking about our levels of prevention, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.